Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Military Mondays. If you and I don't know each other, I would love to get to know you. I am a retired major from the Air Force, Brenda Sanchez, for those that don't know my name, although we're on Facebook. So hopefully you found me here on Facebook. And I love highlighting veteran business owners or spouses. But today, I have a very unique individual on. I heard Louise talk back in, I think it was October, uh, maybe it was November here in Colorado Springs. And she has an amazing story and she is um, what we call a military brat because she did, um, she was the child of a veteran and they have a very unique um, nonprofit that she runs. So welcome to the show today, Louise. It's, it's great to have you on. Thank you for inviting me. I don't know if I need to call you Major or Brenda. Which one? <laughs> Just Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Awesome. So, Louise, I really, I was moved by your story when you were here in Colorado Springs when you shared. And I would just love if you could share that with the audience, just to give them a little bit of a background before we talk about what you're doing today. Sure, sure. Well, um, my father was United States Army, and I actually did not meet him until I was 19 years old. And uh, Brenda heard the story. And when I met him, it was a little dysfunctional. He and my mother divorced when I was a few months old. And so began the, the years of reconnecting. And I really, there was so much I didn't know about him um, in connecting later in life. And we began to build a relationship. So one of the things that I didn't know until later is that he was a helicopter pilot, um, three tours in Vietnam. He served 67, 68, 69. So that means something to those people who are listening. That tells you a lot. When I first met him, I, I met siblings I'd never met. And the oldest sibling said something that always stuck with me. She said, be glad you weren't raised in this family because our dad is a jerk. And I thought that was very strange for her to share that and then the more I got to know him, I go, well, he is kind of a grouchy old man. And, and the turning point for me, and this is what you remember, Brenda, is um, I read a book. And for I think for a lot of us to just, if you serve the military or you want to do better with serving the military, read all the books you can get your hands on. But this book was on killing by Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. And he went deep into the Vietnam veterans and uh, the challenges they face. And there's many of your audience, Brenda, that understand that. They know that. The challenges that those, um, those military, they, they faced when they went to war and especially when they came home from war. Dave Grossman says that there's two things that all warriors need uh, when they return from war. And one is monuments and the other is parades. And our Vietnam veterans did not get that. And the more I read this book, oh my God, Brenda, I shared this at the event, is I was just in tears. I was two o'clock in the morning, finishing the book. And I thought, well, no wonder, you know, there's, you know, it gave me such a deeper understanding. And I would say to anyone who is out there that you have family members who are Vietnam veterans or just combat veterans in general, is to read some books. That book I just mentioned, On Killing uh, by Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. And it was an amazing thing. Gave me a little, he's an army psychologist. But I realized that my father wasn't just a grouchy old man, that he was a hero. I, in fact, um, uh, found out after his death what a hero he was uh, when the military called me and said, do you have any idea? Uh, he received the Distinguished Flying Cross, and I had no idea until after he had died. So, you know what, for me, that was eye-opening. There are so many of our veterans that that don't get the recognition that they deserve at the event. And I will tell you right now that if you know a Vietnam veteran, there's two things you need to say. Number one, thank you for your service. And number two, welcome home, because so many didn't get that. And once again, as, as uh, Dave Grossman said, there's two things they all need, and that is recognition and affirmation. It took a while, but we do have the Vietnam Memorial now, and a lot more awareness of our Vietnam veterans. And what we need to do as Americans, it's never too late to say thank you for your service and welcome home. Exactly. And thank you for sharing that, because so many people like you, they don't realize um, what the military, whether 
whether you served in a combat zone or not, there is a lot to military life that the civilian community just really doesn't understand. And I love what you're doing with AWI, which is American Warrior Initiative, because you truly are bridging that gap between the military and the civilian community and kind of educating the civilian community on what military life is like, especially when it comes to home ownership and getting loans, because so many people, you talked about this at the event, and so many um, mortgage people and um, and real estate agents that truly don't understand the VA loan process tend to want to poo-poo the VA loans and no, let, let's go get a conventional. They want to stick with what they know um, and what they've learned. And um, I just love what you're doing. So let's talk a little bit about that and bridging that gap and how AWI is filling filling in that that hole or that gap in in those two communities? Well, so what I found is when I first went into a military community with my business, I mean, I'm in the mortgage business, is that um, I, I lived in one pair in Louisiana where parishes, so counties for most people. But when I crossed that parish line, I went into a different world. Uh, where I lived was a farming community. Then I moved into a military community. It was two different cultures and I had to learn it. Uh, and that, but I was adamant to do it, to read books, to watch the movies, to do whatever I could, and then to listen to their stories. And I think a lot of times, um, <clears throat> Brenda, what, what any, not just mortgage professionals or real estate agents, but any business, what they do is just don't take the time to listen. What is the story? And if you just will listen to the stories of some of our active duty military, their families. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very involved with veteran, with uh, military spouses out at a, a base uh, where, where I have an office close to, but you hear the stories of the military spouses. And that is heartbreaking. A lot of times you hear, you know, the, the statistics you don't wanna hear, the higher rate of divorce for our military families. I hate that. Uh, the higher rate of suicide for combat veterans. Those are things that the average civilian does not know, they don't realize. Now, one of the things I say about bridging the military-civilian divide, and I just started out as a loan officer in this military community, but it just became my heart. Like the more I did it, the more I realized people need to know this because what I knew is that there were people I knew and loved that didn't know this. And it wasn't that they, <laughs> didn't care about the military or didn't care about veterans. They just didn't know. And you don't know what you don't know. And so I wanted to become a voice. Now for the average civilian, they don't know, they do care. They're just unsure of what to do. Like, well, what can I do? And, and what do I say? And for the average active duty military or veterans, they, they're they in their own community and they, and I'm not gonna put a tag on it, but a lot of think, well, they're never gonna understand. They're never gonna get it. And so they stay within their friends who are military or veterans, and that just furthers the divide. So my job, I feel like my mission, let's say that my mission has been to open the eyes of veterans and active duty military to say, you know what, there are civilians who care, they just don't know what to do. And to open the eyes of civilians and say, you know what, there's veterans who need our help. That a country that doesn't take care of its veterans will cease to be a country. That's a quote but it will. And so we have to take care and we have to do, you know, I, I say none of us can do everything. All of us can do one thing, but you know, and so whatever that is, maybe it's give $22 to buy one of these awesome, remember everyone deployed shirts to wear red on Friday. Maybe that's one thing, but what I found out, and we've, we've had the nonprofit, the actually not formally, but the mission of the nonprofit has been nine, it's nine years old. But uh, it goes back to even before that, when I would partner with other nonprofits, I just wanted to do something. And, and there's so many people, Brenda, that say to me, well, I'm gonna start a nonprofit. And I go, well, you know what? Why don't you just find a nonprofit and partner with them? And that's what I did. And, and I know you, you're very familiar with the Fisher House. And for years, I partnered with the Fisher House. And then the boot campaign, I partnered them. We did our, we did create our own nonprofit, but in the meantime, just do one thing, you know, find a nonprofit that's doing great stuff and partner with them. 
And um, the American Warrior Initiative is 100% underwritten by Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, which means we have no overhead. Uh, well, we have overhead, but we don't cover it. So if someone gives a dollar to AWI, a dollar goes to a local veteran. Now, several years ago, and it was actually in Colorado Springs when this happened, is I heard a young man say, that dog saved my life in talking about a service mm -hmm. dog. Now, I'm just going to say this. I do not understand that. I don't understand how a dog saved life, but I don't understand electricity either. And I love it and I appreciate it and I believe in it. <laughs> I come and I turn on that switch, believing that it's going to light up the room. And I have dozens of veterans and active duty military have said that dog saved my life, saved my family, saved my marriage. And so it was in Colorado Springs that I first heard that from a young man who had just come back from uh, Iraq and, and secluded himself in his house for two years we were at the point of committing suicide when he got a service dog. And because it's so, you know, here's the, here's the, here's the hurtful thing. This is hurtful. This is heartbreaking. It's, it's many times there's a wait list for a service dog yeah. and they're expensive. And, and for David Proctor, who's in Colorado Springs, it was a wait list. And he waited. And when he finally got one, he thought, well, other veterans cannot wait that long. I've got to get trained to, to teach to, I've got to get trained to train service dogs so more veterans can get service dogs. And that's, that's literally what started his mission. And then we came alongside and we've, I think we have helped to find over 50 dogs through David Proctor. So every year, we have like up the ante and said, we're gonna get more dogs, we're gonna do more dogs. The goal in 2020 was a hundred dogs. Well, we all know what happened in March of 2020. Yep. But what most people don't know is that service dog companies shut down. Wow. And most of them stopped breeding dogs and training dogs. And the suicide rate for veterans, and you probably know this, uh, yep. it went up. It there were, for, I was going to say it went up, not just for the service community, but for civilians. Too, it did. So of general. course it did because the suicide rate is, is higher, mm -hmm. but the organizations where veterans could join together on a weekly or a monthly weren't there. basis, they, they weren't there. And, and then veterans who had been waiting on a dog. I mean, it just, I think about how I felt during COVID during 2020. And I'm just thinking that would have been uh, so much more, it would have been exponentially uh, increased for our combat veterans. So we only did, only, we only did 50 dogs in 2020, not because of lack of trying, is we literally could not find dogs. Um, I was at the point, it's like, do I need to train a dog? I mean, what do we need to do? So my goal for 2021 is, you know, I'm telling you, I am putting a stake in the ground. We are doing 100 dogs in 2021. And just last week, and you probably saw my Facebook post, Brenda, we, you know, I'm never one to just reach a goal. I wanted to exceed the goal. We did 101 dogs in 2021. Yes. Yay. And because you can't say 101 dogs without thinking about, you know what you think about. <laughs> so I dressed up like Cruella DeVille and... <laughs> Said, you know what? You cannot have 101 dogs without Cruella Deville. Yeah. If I could found a Dalmatian outfit, I would have done that. But mm -hmm. um, so anyway, we—that's our mission: find the need, fill the need. We did other things in 2021. 20, uh, also, did a roof for a World War II veteran in Virginia who, who's literally his house was falling down around him, and oh, we wow. put a roof on his house. Uh, we have helped families just this Christmas. What you most people don't know that 40 percent. This was the latest, and this is a heartbreaking statistic, but 40%, about 40% of active duty military families rely upon food stamps just to make it through yeah. the month. And that's heartbreaking to me. So what we did, my team did with AWI at Fort Polk, Louisiana, is we did gift cards to military families, and we did it early in the month so they could go buy their own Santa Claus. At, you know, you'll have people that like, oh, we're going to buy Santa Claus. No, let's give them the pleasure. Every parent wants to do that for their kid. So we did gift cards to families. And um, so last year in 2020, I did um, 100 gift cards of $100 each. So I did $10,000 worth of gift cards in 2020. 
well, the, the uh, military spouses I was dealing with, they go, well, those were all gone. I said, well, let's do, let's do 150 this year. And I did $15,000 worth of gift cards. And literally we ran out. I mean, next year I might have to do more. And just some of the stories that I heard, oh my gosh, one thank you came to me and says, now I can buy my baby a crib. Thank you for the gift card. So sometimes it's just the little things, you know, just the little things for our active duty military families. Yeah, it, get, it gives me, I'm sitting here with chills. You probably could see the goosebumps um, <laughs> because we, we do, the, the military community is so, especially at the holidays, is in need of support, um, not just financially, but emotional sure. support because sure. of the disconnection a lot of times with right. those that are deployed. So thank you. Um, for all you're doing. Thank you for the 101 dogs to help um, bridge that gap, that divide. Um, thank you for what you're doing and going out to communities and teaching the real estate professionals. Um, if you are a real estate professional and you want to learn more about the VA process and just about life in general as a veteran, um, Louise teaches such an amazing class um, for real estate agents. And I was at that class because of course, I work with a lot of real estate agents and doing what my husband and I do in retaining your current customers and gaining more. And it was just an eye-opening event. And it was, it was really amazing. There were times that I was in tears because the, the stories and they gave away service dogs that day and we got to see um, several veterans with their service dogs that day. And it's just, I just appreciate you and what you're doing, um, not just for the veteran community, but for the civilian community education wise. So I really appreciate that. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you wanted to talk about today? Oh, uh, other than two things, find the need and fill the need. There's a lot of people that say, well, I want to do a service dog. Well, you know what? You may have a veteran right beside you that needs something else. Don't get it in your mind that it has to be a dog. Um, now, we love to do dogs, but just like the root, we, we, did a, <laughs> we did a walk in bathtub for a Vietnam veteran and his wife. That meant the world to them. They were elderly and needed to walk in bathtub. They're very expensive, like $6,000. We did that. Find the need, fill the need reach out there, get on, get on uh, social media and you can find a lot of the needs there. You can see a lot or become friends with your local VA rep. That's where I get a lot of leads. In fact, she and I are good friends and um, she's telling me about somebody that needs a roof job. And so ADVI is going to jump in. Here's the sad thing of what AWI has done. Find the need for the thing is we've covered several funerals of uh, veterans whose uh, funeral was not covered and a lot of that through suicide. But there again, to help the family to get through that, to cover the funeral expense, we've done that. Find the need, fill the need. We're starting a program where we'd love to take uh, combat veterans on retreats and go just rural fishing and hunting and do some stuff like that. And we're working on that program right now. But when there, if you just open your eyes and your ears, you will hear the need. And then partner with other people that that want to do good stuff too. I think when you raise your hand and say, hey, why don't we? There's other people going, man, I'm in it with you. So exactly. I think that people are looking for a way to give back. They're just unsure. There needs to be a leader. There's one, there's catalyst that says, hey, let's do this. And others go, let's do it. Uh, I, I totally agree because I've heard so many in the civilian community say, well, if I had known that was a veteran-based business, if I had known, I would. They want to support. Um, unlike our Vietnam veterans, I truly believe that that down deep in their heart, most civilians do want to support the military community. Too. They just they don't know how, like you said. So I appreciate what you're doing because um, it just gives veterans another avenue. I also like that you started out partnering with other organizations. Here in Colorado Springs, there are so many 
nonprofits and right. they all have a good idea and they're all like, oh, well, I'll go start one. Oh, I'll go start one. And I love the idea of just partnering with those that are already there in the community to expand the reach or to expand the funding, whatever that might be. And then down the road, if it's sure. still in the cards to start your own nonprofit, like That's you right. did, then great. But there, I think there are so many people that don't understand all of the nonprofits that are out there to support the military and civilian community. And um, it's just like you said, listen, and, um, and together, we all, like you said, if everybody does one thing, that's right. But that one thing all combined together right. makes a huge difference in the world. And I appreciate you and what you're doing. Um, well, thank you for inviting me to this. I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on. If you are watching and you are a military veteran and or a currently serving military member that has their own business, or if you are a spouse, like Louise said, the spouses, um, they go through a lot. And I want to thank you all um, for your service, because as a spouse, you do serve. I know a lot of you, especially if your young spouses are like, yeah, I'm, you kind of downplay yourself, but you play a huge role in the military family. And I want to thank you for your service. And if you have a business, I'd love to talk to you also and maybe feature you on a Military Mondays. So if you would all go to Military Mondays with an S dot info, so Military Mondays dot info, you can watch past episodes and find out how you can help veteran business owners or um, you can apply to be on my show. And, um, you know, I started this just again, like Louise, just to do one thing and help the veterans get the word out about their businesses. So um, if that's you, I, I lift you up and I would love to have a conversation with you. Um, I was going to say something else and I totally lost it out of my brain. It's one of those things, right, Louise? It is um, for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're both in that age group. <laughs> yes. Um, so again, thank you so much. I hope to see you all next week on Military Mondays. If you found this valuable, please do me a favor and like and share this. Even if you didn't, somebody out there needs to hear about AWI. Somebody out there needs a service dog or a roof or something where AWI can support. So again, just like and share this with your entire community so we can get the word out and have an absolutely awesome week. And I will see you next Monday on Military Mondays. Bye everyone.